Well, good morning, everybody around the world, whoever you are watching, maybe from the construction site, maybe in your home office or in the office, wherever you are. I hope you are fine and well in this crazy time. And well, we are sending from Wiesbaden live to you. My name is Mario Sommer. I'm responsible for the technical department of Sopo Bauchemie in Wiesbaden. And I will host you within the next 50 to 60 minutes. And uh, well, relax now for the next 45, 60 minutes and enjoy our session uh, when we talk about outdoor tiling. Well, as you know, um, we are in the beginning of the year. Even Germany this year had some winter time. It was snowing, especially in the north and in the south of Germany, but snow and ice are melting and everybody is getting ready for working outside. And uh, so also the business of tiling in the outside areas is also starting. And for this, we want to prepare you in this next, or in this session. Uh, as you see behind me, everybody is already uh, all right, uh, ready to show you everything which is necessary to do a professional tiling job. On my side, uh, of course, our Zopo technicians and our guest from, Ag from Agrop, uh, Akrop Buchtal, yeah, Buchtal. I have to pronounce this Buchtal also, okay. Uh, otherwise, Robert is um, mad about me. I hope not. So, Robert, welcome. Welcome here. Robert Hoffmann, he is the guy who sleeps with ceramic tiles and knows everything about ceramic tiles. And I'm very happy that you are here today to explain everything what's necessary for outdoor tiling when we talk about ceramic materials. Of course, Jochen, you know him already. He is. Uh, our technical leader in our technical department, and he is on stage almost every day now. So uh, he will explain everything which is necessary from the Sopro side. Yeah. And we have Stefan, and we have Christoph, he, our, our expert tile layers from the technical Sopro department, which will show you in practical uh, sessions now how to deal on outside areas. Well. I would say we start, huh? because we have a tough uh, session now within the next uh, 50 minutes. What, um, what you can do, this is live, and of course you can ask questions, we will answer these questions. And before I forget it, Robert, you brought some presents. Uh, you have the chance yes. to win these nice on, jackets. Come on your side. Yeah, come on my side, but stay away because of Corona. And uh, yeah, yeah, well, you have the chance to win these jackets specially signed from Agrop and Robert, and um, he will come personal to bring these jackets to you, maybe, or otherwise we send them to you. And just go on this side, www.sopro-quiz.com, and there you will see the questions, and when you are answering the questions, uh, I think it will be easy for you to win these jackets after yes. this but session. We have to say that we draw three of these jackets. Yes, we so have three quick. prizes, and you have the chance to win one of these uh, jackets. Okay, well, uh, as I said, let's start, because we have a tough, um, we have a lot of uh, situations which we have prepared for you. And I would say, before we start, actually with everything, Robert, you should explain a little bit about the differences of uh, quality of ceramic materials, because it's a difference if you do tiling in a bathroom with a normal tile, 15 by 15 centimeters, or if you do a tiling outside where we have like snow, frost, ice, water, wind, and all these uh, different situations, uh, which are a lot more rougher than in a bathroom, for example. So maybe you explain a little bit I what you have prepared. I will do, directly. So good morning as well from my side. So I'm not really from Wiesbaden, I'm more from the Bavarian uh, part, so you see that the winter is more rougher than maybe in Wiesbaden. A little so, bit, yes. Um, <laughs> the thing is, why should we use ceramic on balconies, on terraces, or on outdoor um, areas? It's very simple, because ceramic is a really long-lasting material. Uh, it's light fast, so you have no problems with the colors and everything. And that is the important point in this case. So, but we have a, a lot of different um, ceramics in our program for all the outdoor parts. So we can start to explain it a little bit with the really traditional split tile. So it's a stone tile with a water absorption of around about 
So as used many, many years ago, 20, 30 years ago. So this is, has a water absorption, I told you, around about 5%. So, but it's still frost resistant. It's more for the private use. It's not for, for um, restaurants, for bars, whatever. This is one of the possibilities. I would say uh, this, this tile I still have on my balcony since yeah. 20 years already. Yeah. Yeah, some but kind of these As far tiles. as I know, they're most fixed with a thick back yeah. motor. Yeah. So if you want to remove the tiles, you will destroy the house, I think. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the different difficult, uh, difficult thing on the really traditional tiles. But they're still in use. So, but in the last years, we had more and more the thicker tiles, the two centimeter porcelain tiles or stonework tiles. So that we have two different tiles. So we have one uh, tiles which are unglazed porcelain tiles, water absorption less than 0.5%. So in this case, it's important that we choose the right adhesive mm, to okay. install that. Yes. And on the other side, here we, oh, sorry, here we have um, a glazed stonework tile. So it's a different material, so the water absorption is higher, it's more friendly uh, for the adhesive, and mm -hmm. it is glazed. So this is on the other side, the advantage of the ceramic, because when, when you think about um, concrete, uh, concrete stones or whatever, they absorb a lot of water. So you have always a change in the color and you have always these wet spots on the, on, the, on the surface. This is not given with the ceramic because the ceramic will never change the color. And it's not possible that the water will be sucked into the tile and that helps us to have always a beautiful terrace. And of course, frost is not a problem. Frost is never a problem uh, with these tiles because they're all tested, uh, again, uh, due to frost resistant according to the, to the European or international standard. So for the tiles, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And okay. depending on the kind of laying, and we will see a lot of different methods for the installing of the tiles, you can remove that very easily, install a new one, and you have still the same color. There is no difference. When you think about other materials, they change the color, they lost the original surface, and so on. And that is, in this case, the advantage of the ceramic. So, so well, now we have like different sizes. This is 60 by 60. This is 60 by 60. How, we offer... how large can you get <laughs> nowadays? Um, because no. uh, everybody <laughs> wants it XXXXL. If, yeah. if, if, if you know maybe our, our uh, catalog, you will see that we have in the moment only 60 by 60 because we reduced a little bit um, the range, but now we increase it. Okay. So we have now not only this, these natural stone surfaces, for example, we start as well with uh, wooden surfaces and so on. So we start in the end with a, with a dimension of 40 centimeters by one meter and 20. Okay. And then we continue with 60 by 60, 60 by 90, 120 by 120. This is the okay. largest size in a two centimeter thick tile. That's clear. It's difficult to install that alone. So very heavy also. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. You, you, you need minimum two person to install yeah, the tiles. Okay. Um, the thing is, uh, what you, the difference between you install the tiles 60 by 60, for example, in the bathroom, as Maria already said, um, on the outdoor part, you have to check the dimension of the joints. This is a very important point, because usually they have a grid size of 60 by 60, so the production size is 59.7 uh, by 59.7, so you have a three millimeter joint. Three millimeter is, for example, with the solitaire possible, but we recommend a joint size of around about five millimeters. But in this case, you have to see that you lose a little bit the grid size. Mm, okay. that, but this has happened on nearly all tiles when you installed it outdoor. I, I mean, we spoke about this before we started. Yeah. Uh, of course, everybody says three millimeters is, this is what's the most narrow situation, but of, of course, better it is four to five or to six millimeters, also depending on the thickness of the tile. So the more width you have, uh, the better you can fill up the, the, the gap. Yeah. The gap. That's, that's, that's yeah. true, yeah. Okay, I think, we, are, we, are you done? Yeah, we continue later a we little bit more. We continue later, and then you show us some tricks about ceramic yes. uh, surfaces. And uh, Jochen, we could start now, huh? Yeah. Let's go, and I would like to see something what we have prepared. Yeah, sure. Now we uh, heard a lot of about the tiles for itself, uh, but now we want to show you how to lay the tiles. Uh, different possibilities and we start with a system with a drainage mortar, our DMX uh, 
No, the DM610, uh, cementitious drainage mortar directly um, built on top of uh, a gravel part. So um, if you build a terrace maybe directly on this gravel, you have to use a vibration plate um, to get a good, good compression in the gravel. And then you can start um, with a drainage mortar directly on top of the gravel uh, with a thickness normally of uh, 70 millimeters. Uh, and um, then you can directly lay the tiles on top, fresh by fresh. Um, if you use um, a tile adhesive like our MEG 666 Silver, a new product um, in our uh, product program um, that we will show you later too. Uh, S2 tile adhesive, two component uh, material, really, really good attention um, between the tiles and um, the drainage mortar. And um, yeah, so the best way to handle it is uh, to use um, um, the uh, tile adhesive in combination with our uh, tooth trowel. Um, in this case, we use a 10 millimeter tooth trowel. Um, the, uh, the tile adhesive is um, applied directly on the back side of the tile, and yeah, then we can lay the tile on the fresh drainage mortar, um, which is uh, Stefan preparing directly on the gravel, as we showed you before. Jochen, yeah. so, sorry to interrupt you. When would we use this specific construction site, or this construction, especially for like when we have like a, a walkway to the house, for example, or like uh, when we go, when we have to do the road to the garage, for example? Yeah, you can use it in different ways. Uh, first step, maybe if you want to, to build a new terrace, you can use the system. Okay. You can also uh, use it to make uh, the ways through the garden, maybe, yeah. uh, and so on, yeah? Um, but if you want to drive above it, then you have to check uh, the loads on top. Uh, yeah. Maybe you have uh, to use a larger thickness of the drainage mortar, okay. yeah? So that you is can... There, is there like a limit of thickness? Uh, 10 centimeters normally with this Yeah, but we also can material, go up to 15 can, centimeters. Yeah. So there's no problem, actually. Yeah. You can go in thickness as much as you want. Uh, also, when you have like an uneven ground surface um, and you can go on top uh, with this gravel material and you can do it fresh and fresh, as you can see right now here. Um, which tile do we have now here, Robert? This what would you recommend this, in this situation? This, this is a two centimeter uh, ceramic tile. It's a full, body a full body material. And this is the way of, of installing what we recommend if we have garage, if we have um, terraces where we know there comes a lot of load on it, yeah. um, especially the cars, because the braking load of the tile itself is really high. Yeah. It's around about 7,000 Newton per. Yeah. And this is really high, and this is, so you can drive with the car on it, no problem, that works, if you have a solid structure, and this is given with the drainage mortar. Um, if we have then later on the installation of, the gra of gravel, that is more recommended for private use or for light traffic, like maybe at a restaurant. Okay. But if you, if you use some vehicles on it, we recommend only this solution uh, with a two centimeter tile. Yeah. Jochen, can you explain the, why we use drainage mort mortars? Yeah, you, sure. you have prepared something here, can you yeah, explain it? Yeah, we can it? show you some different products. Uh, later in the show, we will show you uh, the difference between the, the materials, so in the first step we use a, a cementitious material, as you can see here. If we are working uh, in combination, as we will see in the next step, maybe with a, with a drainage mask, like this one, yeah. Then um, we have uh, to uh, build a thickness of five centimeters, um, maybe on a terrace, on a balcony or so on, yeah. But if you don't have uh, the height, uh, maybe uh, you have some uh, lower doors uh, in the construction site or so on, then it's also possible to work with a, a resin material. This is a combination of our DEK uh, with our BH869 um, uh, with a mixing ratio, ratio of uh, one kilogram or one liter of our BH869 uh, to 25 kilos um, of the uh, DEK. Yeah? And then you have a material that is um, really, really um, good. The same strength between the 25 millimeter DEK to the 50 millimeter uh, DM610 or DMX619. Um, um, both with the same strengths, yeah? and um, you have the possibility, possibility to build um, constructions where the water can drain directly through the mortar. So 
the mortar won't um, uh, has a, has a um, uh, no water absorption and no water um, inside the construction. The water goes through the material, and uh, so you won't get any problems. Maybe with frost uh, or snow or so on, and uh, yeah, this is perfect for outside areas. So we can show you here. There's a lot of air in the construction, even so. Tonight we have like frost, a frosty situation. Yeah. There's uh, an ice will grow up. Uh, there's so much air in the construction that there won't be any cracks yeah. uh, in the construction itself. Yeah. So the water runs directly through the cavities in the uh, mortar, as you can see here with the. Um, um, Epoxy um, resin material BH869 with our DEK, yeah, runs directly through it. Yeah, and, and, it, the same. and, it, and it dries up right away. That's yeah. the special effect. Yeah, and so if you get some frost and um, the the volume of the water gets uh, larger, we yeah. say about 10 percent, um, then you won't get any problems because um, the freezing water. Um, can grow inside the cavities of the material, and so you won't get any problems with the frost. Yeah? Uh, same with our uh, cementitious material, as you can see. So this is a lot of water um, that we are um, giving directly up to the mortar. Uh, normally, you won't have so much water at the same time, but as you can see, it runs directly through the material, uh, and so yeah, you won't get problem problems in the outside areas uh, with water. I think what you can see so here also very clearly with with the cement-based uh, situations, we start with five centimeters, and when we have like uh, no limit or when we have no space for the construction, then we can start with the uh, resin construction with two and a half centimeters roundabout. Yeah. Yeah. Which we will see now. Yeah, when now they we want to show it. you um, how to handle it. Uh, so, <coughs> in the first step, uh, if you use this um, this uh, product, we have to mix our BH869. Really important uh, in this case. Yeah. So we have a two-component material, A and B. Then you have to mix it. Um, please um, don't mix it uh, with with hand. Uh, so use a machine for the mixing. Yeah. Really important. Then you fill in um, the DEK872 in your uh, bucket. And Jochen, uh, can you say something about the, the sand, the component three? Could, they, could somebody say, oh, I use something on my own, which I have at home? Uh, yeah. Um, Just off, please give me the, the bag. So as you can see, um, we have uh, a special sand that we use here. Uh, it starts uh, with, a, um, with a size of 1.5 millimeters to 3.2 millimeters. This is really important that you don't have um, smaller uh, sand inside, um, so yeah. you get the cavities in the material um, that, you, that the water can run through it. If you use uh, smaller sand with a smaller, uh, smaller parts inside, um, then you will get problems and um, the absorption um, of the of the material uh, will get higher, and then you get problems with the frost and the water in combination. Yeah. Yeah, and we need, of course, a fire dried sand. Yeah, really it's dry also, sand in yeah. combination with the resin materials. Uh, there, you have to watch that the, that the sand is really dry. Yeah, the mixing is really easy, as you can see, with a normal mixing machine. Like we are using for our tile adhesives, yeah. The mixing ratio, as I told you, is one kilo to 25 kilos, so you need uh, not so much uh, epoxy material. Then we use another bucket. Uh, we fill the material in the, in the new bucket, because as you now can see, um, in the camera, there's a lot of resin material on, around the side, on the side of the bucket, uh, and this material has to get inside our um, mixed um, mortar, and this is the case because uh, it is really uh, important to use another bucket um, for the product, then mix it again shortly with the machine. Really easy, as you can see. Yeah, and then you can directly start working with it. Uh, no longer waiting time. 
Uh, in this case, uh, we will do um, a street with a thickness of 25 millimeters, uh, where you can lay your tiles uh, yeah, at uh, another day. Yeah? 24 hours um, later, you can start laying the tiles. Um, but you have to watch, uh, if you're working with the material outside, um, that you have uh, temperatures, uh, yeah, more than 10, 12 degrees is really important in this time, in this drying time, time um, that you don't have colder temperatures outside. Yeah? If you're working with a uh, epoxy material, if you use a cementitious screed, uh, you can start uh, at uh, five degrees and uh, higher. Yeah? Yeah, but you should at least wait a little bit until the sun is shining, of course, yeah. and uh, so that you have good temperature also for the next 12 to 24 hours because you need some drying time and also, at the, I would say, the next day you want to continue with your working uh, process so that you have some good conditions to do the job. And as you can see here, the material is very easy going, uh, yeah. actually no problem. But, uh, there's no big difference between the cementitious system and the uh, raisin system. The um, positive side of, about the raisin system is that you can start with a thickness of two to two and a half centimeters. Yeah. But it's, uh, in the handling, it's like a, a normal cementitious creed. As you can see, really easy, no problems. Also, the, the cleaning of the, of the uh, tools later is, is also no problem uh, with some... Uh, some uh, warm water, it's possible to clean it again, and yeah, so you don't have any problems uh, working with the resin material in combination with the normal tools, as you can see. Would it also be possible to work fresh and fresh here also? It's also possible, sure, yeah. yeah. So but, what we have um, seen before? Yeah, 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 it's possible too, but uh, normally um, we use it uh, to, to uh, make a screed and uh, later lay the tiles on top. As you can see in the next step uh, that we will show you here, um, we have shown you, shown you the, um, the mm -hmm. laying of the tiles fresh by fresh with the tile adhesive and the drainage mortar. Uh, in the next step, um, we show you um, the possibility to make a screed um, with our DM610 or a DMX619, both possible, yeah? And um, then a day later, you can start laying the tiles on top uh, in the same way as we've shown you before. Use your notch trowel, maybe uh, 10 or 12 millimeters directly on the backside of the tile. So you can start, Christoph, with uh, the application. Therefore, we use our MEG um, 666 um, silver, yeah? As we told you before, and now uh, we, want to show, uh, we want to show how to mix the material. So you maybe know our um, MEG systems. We have three dis different tile adhesives. Our MEG 665 with a normal setting. Um, then our MEG 666 silver with a fast setting, both in a flow bed. Yeah, it's a flow bed uh, material. And um, our MEG 667 our uh, tixotropic material for maybe wall areas and so on, yeah. Um, and um, new with our three tile adhesives here is that we um, now have only one dispersion. So we have only one bucket uh, uh, of um, our uh, dispersion that we have to mix with our powder in the bags, yeah. And so you don't have, uh, like in the past, three different um, um, uh, buckets um, for um, the different tile adhesives, you have only one. Yeah, and this is uh, really good, um, really good uh, in the hand for the handling of the materials. Um, so if you maybe um, have to change your tile adhesive, you can use the same dispersion. Yeah, really easy in handling. And um, then you maybe can see the new color of the material. So we don't have uh, the dark brown, um, color, uh, as you maybe know from before, now we have also the silver colored material, as you maybe know from our number one silver 403 or the Varioflex silver VF419 uh, and so on, yeah, with the same color, uh, really nice, looks really good and is really, really nice for handling uh, and using because you have a, a much longer open time to use the tile adhesive. 
um, from about 45, maybe up to 60 minutes before it starts uh, to get uh, to get hard in your bucket. And so the handling time is uh, really increased instead of the older materials, huh? as you can see. So normally then we have to wait a few minutes after we started mixing the two components. Um, uh, about uh, three or five minutes and then mix it again, then the handling time will get longer too. Yeah, so really important to wait this, this uh, few minutes and uh, then start using it. Yeah, three, four, five minutes, really important. Jorgen, yeah. can you explain why we do here the buttering uh, system and not yeah. putting the, the adhesive on the, on the top of the gravel? Yeah, and this is a, a really good question because if we would use the normal maybe floating... We, maybe we can show this. Uh, put some yeah. adhesive uh, on the side. Yeah. Uh, what would happen uh, if you put the adhesive uh, on the gravel? Yeah, let's show it. So, um, guys, please put some tile adhesives directly on top. On the, and the show this with the camera, then we, because then we would fill up the, completely the gaps of the drainage system. No, just, just uh, use some, some tile adhesives directly on the terrace. Mach ein bisschen Fliesenkleber drauf. So, one question from my side. So if you if you apply the, the adhesive directly here on yeah. the okay, on here you can water, so you fill the gaps so the drainage system is now is not working anymore. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 As you yeah. can see stop, now, stop, stop. We, now use the, the other side, use the other side. The other turn it yeah. around. Now you you see with the camera you would fill up the gaps completely. And your effect, which we actually want, that the water is going through very easily and is running out of the system, we would cover now everything and fill up all the gaps and we would actually destroy the system a little bit. So yeah. here it's very important just to put the adhesive on the backside of the, of the tile as, you, as we have done it or as we have prepared it. Just two more words about our Megaflex systems. You know, Jochen already explained it. We have like three different types of Megaflex uh, adhesives, but the re revolution of this year is that we wanted to make it easier for you. So we have just a second component which is usable for all three powder uh, components. So it's easy for you in the handling on the construction side, <coughs> also in the store, and you have just one uh, f uh, component which is uh, the the canister, <clears throat> and you have the three powder situations, and you choose now what you want, fast setting, normal setting, or you want a tixotrope situation for the construction site on the, when you have like a wall situation to clue on. Mario, one word to yes. the system. Uh, Robert. Because I speak as a tile. Yeah. Case, yes, 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 sure. please. Uh, I sleep on tiles. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Uh, 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 I have to ask your wife uh, huh? yeah. <laughs> who you like better. <laughs> uh, don't ask her, please. <laughs> no. The thing is, the most important point for the tile is that we have no or really, really less of water below the tile. Yes. Because the most um, claims what we have with, with tiles on outside parts yeah. are <clears throat> damages by frost. But the first thing is always, oh, the tiles are not frost resistant. That's not true. The, the, main, the major problem is when you have water in the, in the construction, yeah. maybe directly underneath the tile, then we have this effect, as, as you already imply, uh, explained, that water goes bigger, goes wider, and then from frost, it gets warm, thaw, frost, thaw, yeah. and so on. And so from on one day, you will happen that it will be destroyed, the, the, the layer between the tile and the adhesive. And that's yeah. the problem. This is the water inside the uh, construction. So a drainage system is perfectly yeah. because we have no yeah. water in it. But that's also, why, Robert, that's why, yeah. sorry to interrupt, yeah. but that's why we also have developed these Megaflex yeah. systems because the Megaflex systems actually do not absorb any water. Actually, yes. they are a little bit like a waterproofing mem membrane. Yeah. Uh, you can put them into water and they, they do not suck yeah. in water. Yeah. And this is a, a technique which is uh, an S2 technique yeah. also. Uh, comes because of the second component, and uh, we have these, this, these adhesives now since 13, 14 yeah. years in, in yeah. the field, and we have still balconies we have yeah. done 13, 14 years ago, they are still laying like yes. perfect. 
It's not possible that you remove all the water from yeah. the structure. That's yeah. not possible. That is the reason why I said less of water. That's the less of water, of Because in the past, they yeah. laid all with a thick bed mortar. They laid it fresh to fresh. Yeah. So, and the old mortar was, they said, the rot of water. <coughs> that yeah. destroyed on the end the structure. So of course. less of water will always be in. Yeah, That's of course, we also have to talk. We have not done that yet so far. We have to talk about the slope also. In yeah. Germany, we have like different recommendations. Uh, we have the DIN norm, the standards, and so on. You know that. We are the country of norms. Uh, and uh, of course, everywhere you can look and uh, read, you find numbers between one and one and a half and two, uh, two degrees. No, no, yeah. Percent. Percent, percent, sorry, case, percent. Yes. Uh, so you have, the, the truth is somewhere in between. Uh, the more water which is going above, away from the tile, the better it is, of course. But um, sometimes the circumstances on the construction side do not give you more chance for slopes. So we'll see what happens next. Yeah, so uh, one, one uh, important bullet point uh, for the Megaflex system, uh, in this case, as we showed you here before, uh, if you use the floating method and not a buttering method, as we showed you here, and you have the tile adhesive di directly on top of the drainage mortar, um, then the problem is the tile adhesive is nearly waterproof. As a waterproofing, as a two compound semi yeah. slurry, as we will show you later, maybe, yeah? And um, so the water, can't go through the drainage mortar, and this would be the problem, because uh, this is the, the, the reason, because it's really um, important to use the buttering method, and uh, you don't have any of the tile adhesive in our joints, yeah? Really important. So the system will work really, really good, yeah. Yeah, the slope in the system, so just mix the, the tile adhesive the second time. Yeah, it's quite enough to mix it a second time, short time, yeah, and then the handling is really, really easy, uh, much easier than um, uh, without the, the waiting time between, yeah, and then the handling is really easy. So let's talk about the slope. The slope is really important in outside areas. There where you have directly um, uh, your surfaces uh, in, in rain areas um, or snow areas, then we have to build a slope, and the slope should be normally 1.5 or 2 percent. The more, the better, sure, uh, because the water can go faster of the, uh, out of the uh, surface, yeah? But um, as Mario told, uh, it's not even um, possible at every uh, construction site um, to handle these uh, 1.5 or 2 uh, percent if you maybe have uh, less slope, then um, yeah, you maybe can get some problems um, to get the water away. Maybe, uh, Robert, you can uh, tell about something of the surface of the tiles. The, th the thing is, uh, when we talk about the fall, yeah. we have 1.5 1, 1 or 2 percent. Um, the most people think that that's enough, that that helps, that water runs out. It's not possible because it's really less. When you have another material, like concrete, for example, they will suck the water, so you have never a water on a surface. But that's the difference to the tile. The tile is completely close to the surface. There's no possibility to water go inside. So like you still have a little bit of water on the surface. And this is according to, let me go back, it's not a norm, it's a, it's a, a guideline, a German guideline. There's clearly written that it's not possible to, to get all the water on off the surface by using um, this slope of or this fall of 1.5 uh, or 2%. If there is still a little bit of water on it, it's not a claim. Because yeah. it's not possible. The tile no. can't, it's, it's not a miracle. Because it is on. Okay, when the sun comes out, it goes away. Um, but if there's still a little bit of water on it, this is normal. Yeah. So in this case, you can have a slope, I don't know, 5%. It's the same effect. Uh, in this case, if you have a really closed material on the surface, uh, of the terrace, then you will still have, after a rain shower, still a little bit of water on it. But it won't be a problem normally. It's, it's not a problem. Yeah. <clears throat> if, you can, if you explain to people, you will still have a little bit of water on it. No problem. I explained it by parents, and they are not the youngest guys. Uh, use a rubber lip, clean it. It's two minutes. Yeah. That's done. Yeah. It's, it's a very simple thing. 
Okay. Okay, but when we talk about outside, uh, then I think you will explain this later on. Yeah. Then we have to talk also about the surface of the of the of, ce of the ceramic material, yes. so that you have even if there's water on top, that you have like a still a good standing security, yeah. Yeah. that you're not sliding, yeah. and so on. This is also that's, important. That that's that's the thing. Um, according to the guidelines or the, or the standards here in Germany. Um, we must use a surface with a slip resistance of R11. It's really rough. It's absolutely necessary in public areas, that's, that's clear. In private areas, on the end, you can do what you want. But we still rec recommend there as well, minimum R10. Uh, the funny thing is, on the outside areas, on the terrace and the balcony, is the people say, oh, they must be rough because I'm afraid that I slip away. But if you explain that in the, in the shower area, in the bathroom, they say, no, I don't want to have that. It's difficult to clean. So that's the difference between inside and outside. But you must, you must have a minimum of a slip resistance. On a private area, R10, you can work with it. Uh, or if you have public areas, it's clear you must have R11. OK, yeah. good. Well, what, we have, what, what do we see now? This is some kind of terrace. Could be yeah. also a balcony or? Yeah, okay. could maybe be both. But in this case, we have a, a terrace because you have some areas maybe with a gravel here in the in the front side we will show you in a few minutes but here we want to show you a terrace with a, a door uh, directly um, um, with no height difference yeah and this is not so easy uh, for doing the the waterproofing and now we want to show you how you can handle it um, and then how to uh, lay the tiles on top of the different ceiling uh, waterproofing materials as you can see here um, we have two different materials. We used uh, on the one side our ceiling slurry, our TDS 823. Uh, really good product for outside areas um, uh, with a large flexibility also uh, if you have maybe a, uh, around about minus 20 degrees. Um, it's also flexible in this case. Yeah, Really, really good uh, product. And on the other side, our AEB Plus 639. Um, that you normally use if you have to lay larger tiles. Um, um, we, we say uh, you can use our ceiling slurries up to formats uh, like uh, 60 by 60 centimeters. If you have larger formats uh, up to one by one meter, you have to use our AEB Plus 639. Yeah, and now we want to show you both different systems. Uh, we just have installed it, um, um, as you can see. But we want to show you how to uh, handle the um, ceiling directly in the door area. Yeah, maybe we can show with the camera. Okay, as you can see, we um, used um, uh, we have we have uh, done a slope underneath our um, ceiling slurry under uh, our waterproofing. We therefore used uh, a screed material, as you can see here. Our Rapidur M5, yeah, there you can um, handle different heights uh, beginning up to 15 millimeters uh, to 10 centimeters. And um, yeah, if you have to build a slope in outside areas, uh, this would be one possibility to build the slope. Yeah. Jochen, maybe you can explain especially about the AEB material, why we recommend yeah. this outside, especially when we are talking about large tiles. I think this is very important that everybody knows yeah, what's absolutely. the trick behind this system. Yeah. As you can see here uh, on the uh, top of the, um, uh, the material, we have our AEB system. Normally, you know our AEB 640. Yeah. Um, but on the uh, other side, you can see this fleece. And um, the fleece um, um, recommends uh, or, or makes it possible that you have a much larger decoupling of your uh, tile uh, layer on top of the um, waterproofing, yeah? And so uh, it's really important to use this system in outside areas. Uh, inside areas, normally you can use our AEB 640, yeah? And that's the difference uh, with the fleece on the backside of um, the um, membrane. Yeah, it's shock absorbing also, yeah. and we have like a lot of temperature differences outside, so it's like, uh, shock absorbing and takes the pressure. Yeah. Uh, so you can work with large tiles, especially 80 times 80 meter by meter. You start inside probably with your living room area and then you want to go all the way out to your terrace and then you, call, you, can, you can work with the same size of tiles yeah. when you use the system underneath. Yeah. 
So really important to use this decoupling material yes. with larger formats. Yeah? Maybe we should tell them, tell everybody when you use this system, you cannot do like an overlaying. Yeah. Yeah, you have to put this side by side and then where you have the edges, you put a, a tape on top, yeah. which we can see here. No, actually In the not, side huh? area. In the, the side, side areas, can we see. can see that. Yeah. Um, when so you go with the camera on top, here shouldn't you can overlap yeah, the, here you can um, see it. the sheets. Uh, you have to use uh, sealing tape um, for the um, uh, between the different uh, sheets. Yeah. Okay. So what we what do we see now? The preparation, the water improving membrane. Yeah, um, in the area of the door, um, we um, didn't fill the, the screed directly to the, uh, to the doorboard, as you can see. So um, we um, uh, did the an angle uh, in the, in the screed that you do have uh, the possibility to um, let the waterproofing go around this uh, slope, as you can see here, and then in the, on the backside of the door, we um, can good. apply the, um, the sealing, the waterproofing. Show the right side, Stefan, there you can see it. <coughs> yeah, I would say five actually, centimeters in the overlapping, yeah. there you can yeah. fix uh, the sealing tape, and so you will get a waterproof system. Actually, I would say this is a very difficult uh, detail, Absolutely. because always the connection to a window or to a door, especially when we talk about the terrace situation, and we get a lot of questions during the days uh, how to work on these details. And now you see it here. Uh, you use the thickness of the screed, and then you connect the membrane on the door or on the window. Could also be a window. And uh, so you get a safe, water-resistant situation. And you just fill this gap now up with a uh, raisin material. Yeah. Uh, as, a, as a capillary break, you can see uh, you can say um, so that there can't go any water inside of the mortar that we are now filling in in um, this uh, space between the door and uh, our street. Really important to use here uh, waterproof and uh, capillary um, breaking uh, resin material. Don't use, uh, therefore, a cementitious material because um, then the water can go inside uh, of the yeah. cementitious material and maybe you will get some problems with frost, and maybe you can also get some problems with the shrinking of the cementitious material that you have inside um, this area, and so really important to use the resin material, yeah? As you can see here, um, and, uh, but it's, it's really easy to fill it up. Important uh, to use um, the band between the um, capillary break and the waterproofing, um, to get um, um, it, that you have the possibility of the moving between the, um, uh, the street and the water. Yeah, building. maybe we should mention, depending on the country where you are living in, uh, we have like different rules in front of a door, uh, especially when you have no um, different uh, level situations anymore. When you want to go from the, from the terrace into your living room without any step anymore, then you, in, especially in Germany, we need to have a, a rin in front so when it's raining a lot that the water is not going over the door inside. So depending on in which country you are, uh, that could, this could also be a rule in your country too. So if this is necessary, there's also a lot of different uh, details we have in our books, which you can use how to bring a RIN in front of a door or in front of a window when you have no uh, different levels anymore between inside and outside. Yeah, so this it's is very a special important. construction, yes. for sure, yeah, uh, that you have to deal with your, um, with your customers maybe, yeah, so, uh, but this is one possibility to handle um, this uh, door is yeah. the same level as your terrace or your balcony outside. Um, yeah, that you see, we have different options to handle these situations. Well, this is a safe situation. How to connect the waterproofing membrane yeah. to the door or to the window, which is there or could be there. Yeah. So now we see the waterproofing membrane. Yeah. And um, so, Johan, maybe you can say some words about our world of cementitious. Uh, yeah. Slurries. Yeah, sure. 
So uh, now we want to show you our TDS823. Uh, we use it in the wall area, maybe on the facade, um, as you can see here, um, to get this area waterproof. Um, as you can see, we just have the first layer um, on top of the wall, and now um, we um, make the second layer on top. Uh, Stefan is using a notch trowel too, in this case a six millimeter notch trowel, um, so it's possible to reach um, the 1.3 millimeters in, um, in uh, the wet material. So if it dries out, you later reach uh, a thickness of uh, around, around about one millimeter. In two layers, you reach um, therefore then the two millimeters, and that, it's, uh, it, that is what we um, have to build in um, with our ceiling slurries in wall areas, floor areas, everywhere you use it, you have to build in the two millimeters of thickness of the ceiling slurries. Yeah, yeah as we can see now here with the camera, you can control yourself um, <clears throat> and you see at the end uh, when you have like the two millimeters, uh, this is what you need to have at least, and when it's still fresh, then you have like one point two millimeters, for example, and then because of shrinking, at the end there should be 1.1 yeah. or 1.0 millimeters, uh, and the, the completely system is at least two millimeters of thickness you need to have on the surface and also on the wall. And the good thing here, what you can see, that's why we choose this detail, you can do also the floor first, and then you connect the wall to the floor, and especially, Robert will tell us this in a couple minutes, uh, when you want to put tiles also on the, on the facade, which starts actually there, and we can go up some meters, for example. That's also different in Germany, it's very regulated when it comes to tiling on facades, uh, but we know in other countries uh, they are a little bit more open for that, and. Um, uh, so we have some experience, of course, yeah. um, and um, which is also possible. So now he, we are done. Yeah. So the second layer is done. Uh, now you have to uh, let it dry. Uh, yeah, it will take about two hours uh, roundabout, uh, and then you, uh, yeah, probably could start with the tile laying directly on top. So really important in outside areas that the material is so fast so you won't get any problems if you maybe have done your waterproofing uh, in the morning and in the afternoon you have a rain yeah. shower, you won't get any problems with it because it's completely dried out and um, yeah, you don't have any problems with the, with the water on yeah. top. Yeah. And as you saw right now, what, what Stefan did, cover all the bandages and all the pieces which yeah. are belonging to the membrane system so that at the end you just see the slurry anymore and, this, and then everything is fine. Yeah, absolutely. So now, tile laying. So great. Now we can start uh, with the tile laying uh, directly on top of the terrace. Therefore, we also use our MEG 666 system. Um, here, also important to use the 666, uh, better than the 667 because you have a flow bed material. Uh, the consistency is uh, much better for laying large tiles in floor areas because important here is um, that we don't get any cavities underneath our tiles. Yeah? And so we are working in the buttering floating method. Um, as we showed you before, in this case, we apply the um, tile adhesive directly on top of the waterproofing and on the backside of the tile. Therefore, we use two different notch trowels, uh, really important. Uh, in the floor area, we use a larger trowel, a 10 millimeter notch trowel, and on the back side of the tile, we use a 6 millimeter notch trowel, um, and then uh, we apply the tile adhesive uh, in a parallel way on the back side of the tile and on the floor area. Really important, yeah? So um, look that you don't cross the uh, uh, different uh, notch towels uh, on the backside and on the um, floor area. So you have to work in a parallel way and then um, you will get a really good result uh, with um, uh, less cavities underneath the tires. Tiles, Robert, really important. Can you tell us something at the moment? I mean, here we had the two centimeters of tiles of thickness. Is it always necessary to work with two centimeters no. of tiles outside? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's not necessary. Not necessary. 
the, the reason why yeah, we why, can see that. why the two centimeter tiles brought into or we brought can we the, go with the camera in, here in, to the into the market was that we want to cover as well um, a loose laying. Yeah, okay. So in the past, the, the tiles were always connected by an adhesive or by thick bed mortar. But the, for the most people, they said, oh, it's maybe dangerous. So in this case, we brought out the two centimeter tiles to have the possibility to install it as well, what we see later, in a loose way. Okay. Uh, because when we have a traditional uh, construction with screed, waterproofing, and then uh, synthet or floating bed laying, then we can use an eight millimeter tile as well. It's just, uh, there's no difference okay. between a living room and a terrace. Okay, good. Well, when we look here, now we see very nicely, we can use the Megaflex, of course, on all kinds of membranes. Uh, so you yeah. can choose actually your, the membranes you like even cement-based or the AEB system, depending on the size of the, of the tile, for example. But if you are happy with AEB, you can use it all the time. And what we can see here also now is like we have on the, on the floor, we have the adhesive, we have it on the backside, and now we connect these both uh, layers of adhesive very nicely together, and so there won't be any air underneath the system or in the system anymore. But no air doesn't mean 100% of no air. We yeah. always have some percentages of air underneath the system, which does not matter when you use the Megaflex system so far. Yeah. And as you can see, easy going job. Uh, of course, the preparation of the surface is very important. Uh, you can use a screed material. Uh, have we also RAM 3 here? We will talk about this. Uh, yeah, Jochen? we can uh, also talk about the, the RAM 3, as I told you before. For doing a slope, maybe on top of a balcony or terrace, you can use our M5, but also you can use our RAM3, beginning uh, with a thickness of three millimeters up to 60 millimeters. So uh, if you have to build, a, build in a slope um, directly on a concrete or an older street or so on, then you can use our RAM3 uh, too. The material is really fast. We have a fast setting uh, about uh, drying time, about two or three hours, and then you can directly start with the waterproofing on top. Um, really important for you to do your leveling first and then do your waterproofing. Never do the waterproofing and then level on top. First check everything with your heights and so on, uh, then do the leveling, then the waterproofing, and then lay the tiles in a thin bed. Um, that you don't get more than yeah, around about five millimeters of thin bed mortar directly on top of the waterproofing. Yeah, really important. So first leveling, waterproofing, then lay the tiles. Okay, Robert. Now you want to explain. You wanted to explain something about the specialty about the ceramic materials. The special it's thing on the top. It's good that you asked me that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now we see now the tiles are installed. Very very nice. Uh, so we have. Um, a slip resistant surface as well. So the people think, mm, difficult to clean. Oh, it's a rough surface outside, uh, rain, some, I don't know, whatever comes, moss, fungus, whatever, will uh, arrive so here on the, on the surface. But yeah. the most tiles of our terrace uh, program is equipped with the high tech finish. High tech is an upgrade of the surface. It's not an additional layer, it's an upgrade of the surface. We use, therefore, titanium dioxide and we fire that titanium dioxide into the tile. So the system based on the photocatalysis, so that is clear, we need light. So when we have light, and hopefully we have outside on the terrace or the balcony, we have light, so this system will be activated. Light arrives on the surface, and an activated oxygen will be set it free. And this activated oxygen has more than one advantage. The first one is easy to show, I will explain you that now. It's an easy cleaning system. It's very easy to clean. Uh, also, it destroys bacteria and moss, for example, what we have, we have very often on the, on the terrace uh, as well. It would be fired on the end on outside on a regular temperature. And on the other side, it's as well a regular tile. No special thing to observe, no special install no mortar, no special adhesive, no special grouting material. So, what I can show you, it's to work with bacteria, it's very difficult, you know, in the moment situation it's clear. Uh, but we can show you that, the easy cleaning, with a mixery of, uh, it's a 
Standard dirt, that is what we have in Europe as well. Mm -hmm. This is Standard oil dirt. mixed with rust. So okay. it's very difficult to, to clean. So, and our tile in this case, when we have this activated oxygen, it's a uh, waterphilic surface, so it likes the water. It's not what we have, see very often in, in, in the market, the lotus effect, which is hydrophobic, so water should go away. And I can tell, show you now how easy it is to remove that dirt. If you have that on the clothes, throw okay. it away. Um, Put it on your it's not, trousers. It's, no, 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 it's not possible <laughs> to remove. So this is a hydrophobic tile, so a lotus tile. We apply that. And this is a hydrophilic and high-tech tile. And what we do is now we use just a little bit of water. And you see? It's a hydrophobic system. The water should go away from the surface, so not, not possible to remove on the end the dirt. And we do that right here on this tile, just only with a drop of water. And you see the water can go underneath the dirt. Okay, wow, this is and a wash it away. very interesting. You can see that here as well here. Very and then you can imagine that it's very easy as well on the on the terrace to remove okay. all the dirt. So if a bird has lost something during the flight, the same thing, put water on it, yeah. wait, and go. 20, wait one minute maximum, and then you can remove it very easily. Cool. So this is that's a good as well for, for the terrace when we compare it to other materials. So in all your tiles, for, especially for outdoor, do you have Not all the tiles. The most tiles have that. Okay. Uh, for example, the traditional wood tile don't have that, but the porcelain tiles and as well, um, the stoneware tiles, Nearly all tiles have that. You can find that in the catalog marked with the high-tech logo. Okay. It's a very simple thing. Cool. Correct. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Robert. Before we start now with the solitary system, we should also look stairs, and take yeah. a look uh, to the stairs. Yeah. Uh, Robert, you also brought us some very nice yeah. stair uh, tiles. And yeah. uh, a couple of days ago, as, as I told you, uh, in Germany, we had also some winter days this year, <laughs> yes, we and um, well, we also had some accident on accidents on stairs. Uh, a lot of people did fall, did slide, and um, this is these are always very heavy uh, accidents. Usually, you break your leg or your bones, and uh, we want to show you maybe some ideas uh, what you can do to prevent that eyes will. Um, occur on, on, the, on the stair, yeah. and um, for this we have prepared a system which could be also interesting for you when you build a new staircase and so on. Yeah, uh, so you have here um, with the electric floor heating the possibility to get your system ice free. So in this case you can use it uh, on a stairway, but uh, the same uh, you, you can use uh, on your terrace maybe. Um, um, in, the, uh, in the drainage mortar. So in this system, you have to build in the floor heating, under floor heating, directly on top of the waterproofing. And then um, you can build it up with our drainage mortar on top. So you use uh, a, a tile adhesive directly on top of the waterproofing, the floor heating. Then you uh, apply the uh, uh, drainage mortar. And on the back side of the tile, um, you also use the same, maybe our MEG666, uh, fresh by fresh. And then you can lay the tiles directly on top of the floor heating. And um, we built the system with our partner warm up. Um, there you can ask maybe for some more details. And then um, you have a really ice and frost free surface uh, in winter times. A really good system uh, yeah. in this case, yeah, um, that we want to show you here. It's very easy to build up. As you can see here, we have the different layers of our waterproofing membrane. Yeah, you put the slopes first, you modelize them with uh, RAM3, for yeah. example. Then you put the waterproofing membrane, the two layers. And then you get this system. It's an electric heating system. As you see, it's just uh, this cable. And then you connect it here to the waterproofing system. You put in, you glue these uh, metal sticks in. And then just also on top. Also with our ceiling slurry. Yeah. Also we with the ceiling TDS slurry. You, uh, you stay in the system. On top. No changes. And you just connect this together. And as you can see, this is very easy going. And, um, depending on the size of the stairs, you get the length of the cable. Yeah. And then later on, you put this nice ceramic tile as a stair tile on top, Robert, yeah. right? Did I say that, that right? That's right, it's a, it's a stair tile. You see it on, on the grooves and as yeah. well on the, on and the round. And here you have 
on Look, the rounded you, part, yeah. You have, different, you have different nice ones. Maybe I can start at Acrop selling yeah. tiles. Huh? <laughs> what, what do you think? Am I so okay? This is a 30 by 60 that fits maybe if you have a 30 by 60 tile on the terrace or wherever. Yeah. So, but more and more come in yeah. uh, that uh, special um, stair treat uh, tiles, which has a dimension of 30 or 40 centimeters yeah. by 1 meter 20 up to 1 meter and 35. Yeah, so special cool. develop for the stairs that yeah. you have only just one tile to cover yeah. that. Well, it's also important that you have these, uh, how do you say? Uh, the grooves, um, mm -hmm. usually they have, it's, they helps a little bit, yes. Absolutely, but I would say so. But, um, but, you will, but you don't modify with these grooves the yeah. slip resistance of, of yeah, the surface. No. But, but it's an orientation where the step, Yes, it's, it's, it's an, better. First of all, you can, it's a visible thing. You yeah, can see the visible, corner a little bit more. Especially for older people when you yes. do not see and so good anymore. And it gives you a, a plus yeah. of, of, yeah. of safety that's, yeah. the, that's the thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay. okay. Then let's make a short look to our wall situation because yeah. this is also very important, the connection to the wall yeah. and the tile laying on the wall. Yes. Here we, here we use, in this case, a really uh, old, I thought say old new material. It's an old... Um, split tile, but made in different 3D um, shapes. So what is what we see here with the, also with the, with the curve inside the radius, or here with the, the yeah, yeah. triangle. Can we see that? Yeah, triangle. No. Um, so we can continue as well with the ceramic on on the wall as well. Okay. So, but we, as as you already said, Germany, we have a lot of rules. Um, as well for the for the facade, therefore maximum dimension is 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.12 square meter, or the maximum length size is half a meter, and so on. Uh, but therefore we have smaller ones. Um, but this is, as as I already said, it's a new old material. Okay, and so it's like a 3D yeah. tile. Okay. The, the funny thing is, as you also said, in Germany the the ceramic. And facades are not so very often, but when you go yeah. further, for example, to, to Switzerland or in the Scandinavian countries, you will see that more and more. Yeah. Mm. I mean, in, Germ in the north of Germany, a lot of there we have a lot of brick facades, yeah. also built up by ceramic materials. So we are also have we have a lot of experience with yeah. tiling on but facades, it's not but. Very um, when it comes to okay. larger sizes, then uh, that's we the have thing. very strict that, that, regulations. That, yeah, because yeah. the regulation said also, you know that from uh, yeah. um, the dimension of the pores and so on. Yeah. And hopefully that will change in, in, in the future that we talk about then more with the um, connection of the adhesive to the tile instead of pores and something mm. else. I but you also have the possibility, uh, I can show you that, uh, I believe that here, for example, to use only a traditional skirting as well, yeah. instead of instead of the facade. So this is as well a special skirting. It's a curved part here. You can use that as well. With another format, okay. a larger format, uh, now about 50 centimeters. Yeah, on it, we have that. What you see here, these 3D elements in the for the facade as well in the dimension of 50 centimeters. So yeah. it's mm -hmm. 30 centimeters, 25, 50. So it's also not usually not necessary. It's just only to show that a little more to have that in the. Yeah, with a with a cross joint, we have also an offset. Yeah. It's also cross. It's also possible. Okay. Cool. Therefore, we used our MEG six six seven. As I told you, tixotropic material for wall areas. Yeah, S two quality two. Um, same like our six 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 two component um, uh, with really high um, attention to the surface, to the un, uh, and the tile. Yeah. Uh, also with the uh, with the larger tiles, no problem in outside areas, and so the really good system um, in this case. Well, then let's go to our solitaire system, yeah. the, last the last position step. in our session today, which yeah, is a very important, a, I would say, over the last three four years, very yeah. common. Yeah, we have a really special system here for you. Because, as, as you maybe can see, we have an unbound gravel underneath our tiles um, that we have um, uh, overworked uh, also in the first steps with a vibrating plate. Uh, then we built our gravel on top, um, um, uh, make, made it really even, yeah? And then we used um, this two centimeter ceramic, ceramic tiles with a format, in this case, 60 by 60 centimeters. Uh, and then we apply uh, a tile adhesive, therefore you can use uh, uh, maybe um, also our uh, number one 400 or the number one silver 403 
Um, you use a notch trowel on the back side. You can use a notch trowel 10 by 10 uh, uh, millimeter. You can also use a larger, as we can uh, see here in the next step. And then you apply um, the tile adhesive also on the back side of the tile. And you lay it on top of the unbound gravel, yeah, as you can see here in the next step. Um, the tile will lay directly on top on the, on the uh, gravel, but it won't move away, as you maybe can see on the backside of this other tile that is staying here in front of the um, uh, detail. There you can see the gravel now is bond directly with the tile adhesive, and so the tile that is really slippery on the backside normally, yeah, won't uh, slip away and will stay directly in this position. Really important. Another uh, point is that you can see maybe the stones around of our tiles that we have laid here um, before. Uh, these stones are laid in, in a drainage mortar, so um, the tiles are um, bond on this position and also can't slip away outside of the maybe terrace that you will build uh, in uh, at this Yeah, uh, you have to build there. like a frame around yeah. the tiles so that the tiles, uh, the, the area of the tiles will not move, of, will not move apart. Yes. Yeah? So Robert, now I would say I see already shiny eyes. This is now <laughs> the moment for the two centimeter tile because yeah. It's not a, actually not the usual tradition anymore that we, no. that we glue or connect uh, the tile to a, to a surface like a, a cement uh, screed or like a gravel screed. Uh, here it's like just gravel, loose gravel yeah. any, uh, now is, and actually the tile is loose laying yeah. on top. The funny thing is when we uh, received some question concerning terraces, how we, how we can install it and so on, and we explained that this way. Yeah. Uh, please apply um, the adhesive on the back side and then you glue it into the, the gravel. Is that what? Why? Yeah, it's everybody a, was that, wondering. Probably. That makes no sense. But yeah. if you explain it, because now we, we see he hits the tile, he leveled the tile with the rubber hammer. Yeah. If you have no adhesive below, yeah. you have no chance, nothing. You can, you can hit what you want. And you have always the problem that you have a tile which is always in movement. Yeah, it's moving a little bit. It's moving bit. always. Yeah. Because the advantage is that you have a solid material, but it's not in the same white as a concrete, for example. So and this yeah. is, therefore, it's a risk that it is just moves a little bit. Well, and I, uh, wobble <laughs> a little bit as well. And therefore, for us, it's the only way to install yeah. a two centimeter tile on gravel to use that system. Yeah. Because well, actually, this, no la this laying method was developed by Sopro. You know we that? know, we have, yeah. I yeah. know that, yeah. because we have done that <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, and as you can see, yeah, you don't there's... have to build in uh, yeah. a concrete uh, maybe underneath it. You can yeah. build it up directly, maybe in your garden. Um, you build in uh, a gravel underneath it, uh, yeah, about 30 centimeters normally, then uh, compress it with a, a vibrating plate. Then uh, use a smaller gravel um, with a con, I think uh, four to eight millimeters normally, yeah? yeah. With the broken, uh, broken parts inside, not the round um, uh, sand uh, or the gravel, not the round gravel. And um, yeah, then you can build up this system uh, directly on top. Yeah. And now uh, we have to fill the, the joints between yeah. the tiles. Maybe we can huh? take a look uh, to this gravel here. What's important, whichever country you are, it's, you cannot use round gravel, which is coming from like a, a, a lake. You have to use sharp gravel so that the gravel is connecting to each other very hard together and you cannot sink in anymore. And when you use now the glue between the tile and the gravel itself, you get a very good connection. It's, it's sticky and you get a very good connection between the tile and the gravel. And as you can see here, the back side of the tile, can we see that in the camera? then now you also have like the very good connection and you have more weight in the tile. That means the more weight um, means that the tile is not moving anymore or cannot, is not easily moving, movable anymore. So you have a lot of uh, positive effects when you do it this way. Yeah. Yeah? Now let's see the solitary system. Yeah, there we have a resin material too, but the one component material um, that we use here. As you can see, uh, you have the bucket with a bag inside, and um, if you 
cut and open uh, the back, then the reaction starts um, with uh, the, uh, um, the air, uh, and the reaction starts and it will get hard uh, in a few hours. Yeah? So um, it's really important to work with a lot of water. As you can see here, um, uh, we first uh, get, uh, put some water on top of the surface of the tiles, and then we use a lot of water um, to build it in, but uh, the water won't uh, get a connection with the resin material. It also al always runs through it. Yeah? And, uh, but we need it to transport the resin inside of the joints. Um, and so you can fill it, uh, fill it up completely and really easy with uh, a combination of the resin uh, part of the Solitaire F20 and uh, the water inside. As you also can see, you can fill up the joints of the, um, the uh, stones uh, next to the tiles. Yeah, it's no problem uh, with uh, joint widths up to 20 millimeters. Um, no problem with the uh, Solitaire F20. Really easy. Then um, after you have uh, um, applied the um, product, you have to wait uh, Yeah, normally about 30 or 60 minutes. Um, uh, you have to uh, look uh, to the temperature outside. If you have higher temperatures, uh, it's enough to wait 30 minutes. Normally, with colder temperatures, uh, you have to wait about 60 minutes. Uh, and then you can clean your surface really easy too. You don't have to um, use water again. Therefore, uh, you can use a normal uh, uh, brush, uh, as you can see in a few minutes. Really well, as we can see, it's, it's very easy going. You just need a lot of water. That's yeah. very important. You need a water hose, not just a bucket of water. You need a water hose when you do this job. Yeah. And maybe, Jochen, we should explain the constructions we have seen before here. We can use, of course, also uh, one of our cement-based uh, crowd materials. But when we come to this construction, especially to this construction, because there is still some moving in the construction when you walk on it, when there is like temperature changes, so here we need like a very flexible crowd system, and that's why we use solitaire system, because this is a, a, a raisin system in this case, and it stays flexible. The connection between the tiles is very good. And so if there's like some, some movement between the tiles, which is always there, because it's still a, a soft uh, system, uh, so that the, tile, the crowd will not break off, uh, so you have to use the solitaire system, which is very easy to handle, uh, as you saw right now when we bring in the material. Yeah. Yeah, and in the next step, uh, as I told you, normally we have to wait uh, about half an hour. Now we don't have the time, so we want to show you yeah. directly how to clean the surface because it's really easy. Um, if you wait uh, a few minutes longer, then uh, it's uh, quite easier to uh, get the uh, joints completely filled up with the material. Now we try to show you uh, how to handle it because as you can see, it's uh, really, really easy. Yeah, yeah you just clean it up clean, with yeah. a broom and then actually that's it. Well, I guess we are done, huh? So yeah, far. I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Robert, yes. did we forget anything? Not really. Or do you have anything to add on? No. Just buy my tiles. That's, that's clear, that's clear. So okay. if you order today, we have no. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for preparing for prepare everything so far and so nicely. Uh, ladies and gentlemen at home, or wherever, wherever you are, well, we know, of course, uh, each construction site is a little bit more different. Uh, you have all kinds of different surfaces, also from country to country, there's differences. But uh, we tried to give you some different options, some ideas of doing the tiling, uh, <coughs> starting with the gravel construction all the way up to our solitary system. So you, have the, you can choose now also, depending on the size of the tile, uh, <coughs> what is possible in your situation. And I think for sure, uh, Sopo, when you look into the catalog, you will find always a solution. And if, if you do not find something, give us a call. You, are, you know Johannes, our international business guy. He speaks 10 different languages. You can ask him all the time. He's day and night there for you. Uh, and um, also you can call the technical department, of course, too. But uh, Johannes is always tr is sad when he's not getting a call. And so call him. Um, well, I hope you had some fun uh, watching us now. And uh, I hope there were some, we gave you some ideas for your construction site from tomorrow. 
Um, all the best for you. Um, stay in contact with us and I hope we can see each other soon when it is possible. Thank you very much and have a good time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.